Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last session, we looked at a Docker file and AWS ECR. So we looked at how we can build our Docker image using the Docker file and then uh, how to authenticate to AWS ECR, how to push the Docker images to the registry and also how to pull the image from the uh, ECR registry. Now in today's session, we are going to look at how we can use these Docker images that we have pushed to the AWS ECR registry and then deploy the microservices uh, in our Kubernetes cluster, which is running in EKS. So here I have my cluster running and here we have the repo that we created in the last session. So we will be using these Docker images that we have here in this repos and we will be deploying our pods in this Kubernetes cluster. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. Now, to deploy the microservices, the product and the orders microservices, we will require at least two different Kubernetes resources. So we will require a deployment and we will require a service. And I want to start off by writing, a, by talking a bit about these resources so that we understand their respective purposes. So first we will talk about your deployments. So a deployment is a special type of Kubernetes resource, which is categorically known as controllers. And if you recall, controllers help you to regulate the Kubernetes state by making sure the live state matches the desired state. Now, more specifically, deployments can be compared to a manager that delegates responsibilities to make sure the container orchestration process is running as expected. The expectation in this case be in the desired state. So deployments uh, work with replica sets to maintain the number of pods and then the replica sets in turn works with the pods. Now let's take a look at this from the bottom. Now we know that pods is where our containers will be run. So pods are simply your ephemeral wrappers that house one or more containers and their job is to focus on running one or more containers that we specify. Now replica sets on the other hand are same as your deployments and they are also a controller. We have already discussed about the differences between deployments and replica sets in the earlier sessions. So I'm not going to go deep dive into them now. So replica sets mainly help you to directly manage the state of your pod or multiple pod instances. Finally, right at the top is where deployments operate. Uh, this helps you to manage things from a higher level and they are responsible for deploying and updating applications in a declarative way. So we create a deployment, uh, deployment works with your replica sets and replica sets in turn helps you to manage your number of pods. The second resource we have is your service resource. So services are used to provide network stability uh, in front of your pods because pods have a short life cycle which in turn prevents them from having stable and predictable reachability. We will talk more about your services in a follow-up session but for now just understand that services are used to expose the pods over the internet so that we can access the application running inside the pod. Now let's switch to the manifest files. So here you can see this is the repo. Uh, I'll be sharing the link to this and I have a few manifest files here. So manifest files is what we used to tell Kubernetes what we want to do and what resources we want to create in the cluster. This is where we define the instructions for the cluster. So let's start by looking at the orders uh, deployment manifest file. So like any other resource manifest file, you specify the main top level fields like your um, API version, uh, the group that it belongs to, the kind of resource that you want to create, the metadata and the top level spec. I have named this deployment as orders. You can name it whatever you want. I have specified the replicas to specify the desired state in terms of uh, the pods, in terms of the number of pods replicas that should be running in the cluster. So in my case, I expect it to have two replicas of the orders microservice. Now remember, the deployment manages the replica sets and the replica sets manage the pods. Then under the selector field, I specify the labels of the pod that this deployment will manage. So here, this is the label that I have specified. Finally, under the template configuration is the configuration for the pods that this deployment will be controlling. The label in the pod template should match the label or the labels in the 
deployment selector property that I have covered up here. And then under the spec section, template spec to be specific, you specify the container configurations. So I'm only running a single container in each of the pod replica, hence there just been one. As you can see, this is an array property and I have named my containers as orders. And here I have specified the container image that is stored in ECR and EKS will pull this particular image in order to start up the appropriate container. And then my container will be listening on traffic port 3002. So this is for my um, orders deployment. So that's for the deployment. Then we have the service resource. And similar to the deployment, there are uh, requisite or generic top level fields that are expected when scripting manifests. The API version, the kind, the metadata and a top level spec. But I want to focus on the spec starting with the selector. Right. So this is how you attach a service to specific pods or tell it which pods it is responsible for proxying the traffic to. So you can see the selector here. So this should match as what you have defined in your deployment. So uh, here you can see this um, uh, labels. So it should match with what you're giving in the service. And that's how your service is able to proxy your tra traffic to the respective uh, pods. So you specify the label, which is the same key, va key value pair attached to the pod. And then next you specify the type of service um, you want to create. So in this case, I'm creating a node port uh, service type. Uh, you know there are different different types but for this example I'm looking at creating a node port. So when I access the application in the browser the traffic will be sent to my environment and the proxy will and proxy the traffic to the relevant pods. Next we have the protocol and you can see this is set to TCP and then I have the specified uh, port number over here and this port is the port that the service is listening for traffic which is your port 3002. And then finally, I have the target port, which is same, which as the name somewhat implies is the port or the destination that the service should be proxying traffic to. And you may have noticed that this port 3002 aligns with the container port because our service is going to be proxying traffic through that particular container. So that is the service and the deployment. So this is a service uh, resource and here is the deployment resource. Now, I'm not going to go over the products manifest file in detail because they are very similar. So here you can see the product deployment. It's almost the same. The image URL is changing. The uh, container port uh, is changing. And likewise for the service, uh, the port numbers are changing, but the rest of the things are the same. So like I said, the main differences are the service ports. So in this case, the service is listening on a different port and uh, for the product, is it is listening on 3001. So now that we understand the Kubernetes resources, let's deploy them to the EKS cluster and see the results. So here I have my cluster. So you can see I have my uh, two nodes that are running and I have the manifest files on this server. Again, like I said, I'll be sharing the link to this and you can clone this to your machine. But in my case, I, I already have the uh, products deployment, the respective service, the order deployment and the respective service. Now it's just a matter of uh, creating these resources. So first I will start off by uh, creating our product deployment. So we'll say kubectl create hyphen f and then the name, the deployment. So this will create a deployment for us. So um, if you see the manifest files, I'm telling that I want to create two replicas. So let's first um, look at our deployment. So we'll say kubectl get deployments and you can see as of now I have the products and two of two is ready two is up to date and two is available and if I say kubectl get pods I should be able to see two pods for my products and they are in the running status next let's go ahead and create the respective service for it so again kubectl create hyphen f product service and this will create a service for us so again you can list this so kubectl get services and you can see here it has created the service and this is the node port so we have created our pods which is our deployment and we have created the respective service now how do we access this now to access this one very important step is you will need to open up this port number in your security group so let me copy that and let's go back to our um, instance 
So let me open up EC2. So here, these are the two instances that are part of my cluster. So we'll go to the security, we'll open up the security group and we will add this port number. So let me add this and we'll allow the traffic from anywhere. So this is going to be my products pod and I'll save this. And now we can take the server IP and let's try accessing that on the respective port, which is 32127. And uh, as of now, I'm getting this error, but if you remember the last session, so we'll have to give this and you can see I'm able to see the products. So now we are we have created our product uh, pod and we have created the service and now we are able to access this application running inside this pod via our service. So we are hitting the service on this port number, which in turn is proxying our traffic to the respective pods and we are able to access the application from the internet. Now this is for the products um, uh, resource. Now let's do the same thing for the orders resource. So again, I'll first create the um, uh, deployment. So kubectl create hyphen f deployment. And next I will go ahead and create the service. So now I should have two deployments. So you can see there's a, a deployment for products, there's a deployment for orders, and I should, I should be able to see four pods in total. So two pods for the orders because replicas is set to two, and two products for the, uh, sorry, two pods for the products. And I should be able to see two services. So there's a typo. Okay, so there's my order service. Again, if you want to access this application, this service, you will need to open up the respective port number. So let me go back to the security group. Let me edit this and we'll allow this from anywhere. So this is going to be my orders pod. And we can again try accessing this server IP colon the respective port number slash orders. So as of now, I don't have any orders. That's why this is empty. But now you can see that again, I'm accessing the service on the respective port number, which in turn is proxying my traffic to the respective pods where my applications are running. So let's take it step further. And what we will do is let's create an order and let's you know see the result in the output. So let me do a curl here. So curl and uh, I just need to change the IP and also the respective port. So this would be the IP and the respective port. And uh, yeah, so let's hit that. Sorry, there's a, I have HTTP twice. So that's the error. Okay, so it says product not found. Interesting. So let's do one thing. Yeah, so there's one, there's two. So what am I missing? Okay, so this could be related to the code that I have here. So you can see this is doing a local host 3000. So maybe my guess is that it is not able to hit this uh, to add the product. So it is simply going to this product not found error. I'm not going to worry about this uh, because the whole point of this session is to show you how we can uh, uh, deploy these images, the Docker images as a container um, in our uh, Kubernetes cluster that is running in EKS. So that is what we have done here. So, you know, just so you can see everything. So we have, uh, we have created a couple of deployments, which in turn is using the replica sets. Uh, so we have four pods running in total, and then we have two services running in total. So that's basically how you can deploy your application as a pod in a Kubernetes cluster. And then you can use this service to uh, expose this pod so that you can access the application over the internet in the browser. Now at this point you have used the node port uh, service type, but there are different, different types. I will be talking about them in the um, uh, upcoming uh, session. And that's all I have for this session. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like, share and subscribe to the channel for more content. Hit that bell icon to get notified whenever I upload new videos. If you have any feedback or any queries, please leave them in the comment section below.
Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.